Biometrics. It's using body measurements and calculations related to human characteristics to allow you to authenticate and gain access to something. This is commonly used in our mobile phones today. And you can use your finger to unlock your phone or and pay for items using your phone. Some actually use your face to unlock your phone as well. We know that Hyundai has revealed the world's first smart fingerprint technology to vehicle back in late 2018. It's only available in selected markets, but it seems like it has not been widely adopted yet. The Hyundai system allows drivers to unlock and start their vehicle without using any car keys because your fingerprint is the key. In this video, we will be looking into Toyota's approach to this. They have a patent that they filed since 2019 and recently updated in 2024. Let's see what Toyota has in their pockets. So doing more research on fingerprint starting, I actually found that in 2021, Toyota actually launches the new Land Cruiser, and I think this is probably in Japan only. So I haven't seen this in North America or what. But if you continue down here, you would see that they actually did introduce a fingerprint authentication on Toyota vehicle. So it says, start switch with fingerprint authentication for the first time on a Toyota vehicle. So they're saying a fingerprint sensor is located in the center of the start switch, the start of the engine, the driver must carry the smart key, okay, press the brake pedal and touch the fingerprint sensor in the center to start the switch. If the fingerprint matches one of the fingerprints registered to the vehicle, the engine starts. If it does not, the engine does not start. And this is equipped to the ZX GR Sport VX AX grades as standard available on a manufacturer option for the GX grade. So I haven't seen this in other North American or other markets. This is actually cool that they've already implemented this, but you notice that this may not have the, the lights. So this probably with this update of the pattern, I'm thinking that this will now start seeing in more other like on, on other markets and having it available for other vehicles and this probably will help mitigate the issue that we see with car theft. I still don't know when they're going to launch this, but since 2021, they've actually put this in already. It seems like this should be something that they could add on and introduce in other vehicles going forward. All right, so right now at the U.S. patent, you can see this March 19th, 2024. But you can see dates here that is even prior to 2024, even 2013. But let's see what else this thing says here. So you can see here that the original filing was actually 2019, August 1st. And then there was an update, probably 2021, and there's mm -hmm. other stuff. So definitely, this is not new things from Toyota. It's just that they've been working on it, trying to get things done. All right, so there's an abstract here. It says a biometric information authenticating device includes a biometric information sensor to detect contact of an operating finger with a reading surface and read biometric information of an operating finger and illumination unit, including at least one light source and a control unit to indicate completion of reading of the biometric information by an illumination pattern, including a combination of turning on and off at least one of the light sources. So this seems like they're talking about there's a light ring and that they have this biometric. So you can see here, engine start stop. There's this biometric reader. So this is read your finger. And then you have this ring is I think that's where they're talking about the light source. And there's a lot of notations here but I, I guess it's going to be a little bit hard to explain let's continue down and see what else they have to say here so there's a diagram with the same thing and then they have some thing figures that talk about how things will flow and i'll probably have to explain that a little differently and then they have also fingerprint okay how they read the fingerprint and then there seems to be a flow chart of how things work 
And then here we have light sources, so how the patterns are going to be turned on. We'll go through that later on. And then they have a workflow of how this will work. So background art, okay, a start controls device is known, which is provided with a start switch, giving an instruction to start or stop a drive source. A startup means uh, for starting the drive source, a fingerprint sensor for reading fingerprints, and a control means which, based on input from the fingerprint sensor and the start switch, implements a startup process to control activation of a startup means, okay? So they're saying that fingerprint with another control to actually start up a drive source. So when the start switch is given the instruction to start, the control means that the start control device performs a fingerprint verification by comparing a fingerprint read by the fingerprint sensor with a pre-register fingerprint before startup by the startup means. And once a match is found, the control means authenticates the user as a genuine user and allows the startup, which means to start up. Okay, so it's just saying that they have pre registered fingerprints and with the fingerprint, you don't need keys. I think that will actually start up the vehicle. All right, so they're saying that there's a technical problem that this patent is trying to solve. So what they're saying is when you actually perform a startup, so when you put your finger for verification, there's no feedback to tell you that you can take your finger off. So there could be times where you have problems with the operation. So when you just touch it, it verifies, but you put your hands off, then you expect the car to start, but it does not start. So that's why they're doing this pattern. And then when you look at here, it just says that their solution to this problem is to give uh, a light source. So they're saying that there's an, an illumination unit that compromise of more than one light source. So when you put your finger onto the startup, it will actually light up uh, and then it probably would blink or will change colors based on the authentication. So in short, I think what this pattern really is about is it's talking about when you put your finger, it will give you feedback that you can take your finger off or there's an error or when things are happening so that you don't get a sense where you just to push it and you don't know what happens. So that is why they actually came up with those colors, uh, those lights. Uh, there's a lot of explanation here and I don't think I'm going to be talking much about this because there's too much detail and it gets very complex. Follow me on Instagram at lsftvideos. You can see updates on my experience with the NX450H Plus which may not be shown on any future videos. You can reach out to me via direct messaging if you have any questions on your Lexus. If you like this video, you can provide me feedback in the comments below, like this video, share it with your friends. This definitely will help with the YouTube algorithms. Press the subscribe button and bell icon and get notified when new videos show up. And lastly, if you want to support me further, you can provide me a super thanks or visit my Amazon storefront before you purchase anything from Amazon and or you can purchase products from the list on the items that I've been using with my vehicle or at home at no extra cost to you. And now let's continue with the video. All right, so in order to explain all how this all works, we need to talk about interval A, B, C, D, okay? So it says here the first interval A. So it says interval A is from when the door of the vehicle is opened to when the brake device is operated. So that is interval A. Interval B is interval when the brake device is operated and to when the touch operation perform is on the operational surface is detected. Interval C, and that is when the touch operation is detected to when the acquisition of the capture image is complete. Then we have interval D, which is interval from the acquisition of the capture image is complete to when the drive system is started. It does say that um, it could mean interval D could be another state where there's a failure. All right, so there are different patterns. So they also have like A to E patterns, and those patterns will actually mean for different applications. So they have one pattern that is used for different types of intervals. And 
I don't know what they are. They probably explain it here and I probably will leave a link in the description below so that if you're interested, you can read it because it gets very complex. All right, so before we actually move on, uh, before we conclude, let me go into here and there's actually a workflow here and I wanna go and also show the intervals that they have here. So I'm gonna move this to the side and then show the intervals. So it says here, start, is interval input yes or no? So yes, and then it'll eliminate for interval A. So interval A is here. You can see that they have different patterns and I'm just, let's talk about E here, okay? So what it means is when you open the door between that time to when you press on the brake, it will have a slow blinking white light. Interval B, so it says, is interval information input? Yes, then it will actually show interval B, which means I stepped on the brake. Okay, so when I stepped on the brake, it'll have a rapid blinking white, white light. Okay, then it says, is touch operational performed? If it is, then it will show C. So C, you get a solid blue light. Then we go here, is reading complete? Yes. And if is the reading successful? If it's yes, it will go to D1. So D1, it will actually give a solid green light. And if it is not good, then it would actually go to D2, which is a solid red light. Then after that, it will say, is authentication successful? So can it match a fingerprint? And if it is, output the instructional signal, so meaning it'll probably have an output somewhere. And has the drive system started? And if it has, then it will turn off the light. So you can see that this pattern really tells you that it gives you the input of your fingerprint and when it authenticates and it gives you the lights of what will happen. It seems quite simple. So when you open the door, it'll slowly blink. When you are ready to start the car, you step your, the leg onto the brake, it'll blink faster. When you put your finger on, it will do, have a blue light. And then once it authenticates you, it reads your finger, it's green. If not, it will be red. So final thoughts on this. So definitely, I think this is something that will advance later on. We've been looking at, okay, we have key fobs, and then now we have like a relay attack. And then after that, we are introducing like a digital key using your smartphone, but there are advantages and disadvantages of all these things. And then also now looking at biometrics, not, not saying that Toyota is the first one doing this. There's already on the market some other ones, but they're enhancing it with what they feel that it gives you a better UX. It gives you feedback of what color so that you know what the system's doing rather than you touch it and you think the car will start, but it didn't work. So you take your finger off, you put it again, it doesn't work. So I think that's what they're trying to do with this pattern. And I think this is actually cool, but in the winter, if they're using like, like this biometrics to unlock your car, I'm a little bit concerned about having to use my fingerprint in the winter, have to take my gloves off and then put my finger onto the thing to read it, to unlock. That may not work in Canada or Northern States, right? So does that mean you still need a key fob? I don't know. Or would it be a NFC on your phone or Bluetooth, like a digital key? Things are still not clear there. But once you get into the car, I think starting the car, you maybe what I would say is with all the car thieves happening right now, maybe having the key fob and having the biometric as a second factor will start the car. Without that bio, like that second factor, your finger, it probably will not start. That could be a good thing. But then if you want to go and like give, give the car to your friend over the weekend to drive, if he doesn't have a fingerprint, what will happen? A lot of issues, a lot of concerns. So what do you think? Leave in the comments below. Do you think this is actually useful? And are you looking forward to biometrics into the car? Can it do more? Definitely, because if it knows your fingerprint, it can load that profile in the Lexus interface. It knows it's you, so it doesn't have to rely on the key fob. I think that will have a lot less issues of, of what we see 
in the Lexus interface right now with profiles loading or not loading. Whoever starts the car with their finger loads the profile. Isn't that easy? Let me know in comments below what do you think about this pattern. I hope that you found that this video was informative and until next video, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, share this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can provide me a super thanks. And until next time, cheers.